Okay, I can say again, God bless you. God bless you to be disciples who follow Jesus this year. That is the greatest blessing. That is the greatest blessing in our life journey. Disciples who follow Jesus is our topic 2019. In 2019, disciples who follow Jesus. Disciples, disciples who follow Jesus, it sounds common sense for Christian, but we must keep in mind, keep our mind, because when you read the Bible, there were disciples who betrayed Jesus, and there was a disciple who sold Jesus at 30 silver coin. Do you remember that? So we must be disciples who follow Jesus, not betray Jesus, not sell Jesus. We have to be disciples who follow Jesus. So, I'm going to deliver the message how we can be disciples who follow Jesus only and enjoy the disciples' lives with growth and maturity of faith through the Sermon on the Mount this year. Yes, I'm going to deliver the message through the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is the core and summary of Jesus' teaching, as you know. Even non-Christian would quote some words in the Sermon of the Sermon on the Mount. And someone argues it is like Christian ethics. Oh, that's a good word, but it is not just a quotation people can use. And it is not just a Christian ethic. Actually, it is beyond the Christian ethic. I can say the Sermon on the Mount is privilege and appearance we can take as the disciples who follow Jesus only. That is our privilege we can take, we can use, we can enjoy. In today's scripture, Jesus saw the crowd. who followed himself and went up on the side, side of the mountain and sat down, Jesus' disciples gathered around him. He opened his mouth and taught them. In the Bible, open the mouth, actually it is a literary, literary, literary technique that Jewish people used when they record very important thing. Are you with me? So, Jesus taught very important things for disciples who follow Jesus. At the time, the first one is about blessing. It was the declaration. The Bible said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, the first word of Jesus is Blessed is blessing. So that the first thing we must know as disciples who follow Jesus is to understand right definition of blessings. Right definition, right concept of blessings. We have different viewpoint of blessing than this world. Think about Beatitudes. Yeah, the poor in the spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, and the merciful, the pure in heart, peacemakers, and those who are persecuted for righteous sake. They are quite different than blessings in common sense. How can they be blessings from God? What are the blessings in the Bible? We need to know about it clearly first to be disciples who follow Jesus. That is the message I'd like to deliver today. Number one, the blessings the Bible teaches is wealthy in Jesus. Wealthy in Jesus. Look at the Genesis 26, 12, and 13. And Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Can you believe that? Hundredfold. You don't like that? I like it. I like it. Whatever you invested, it will be hundredfold. 
God bless you. Where are you? Yes, I like that. And then, because the Lord blessed him. Yes, the Lord blessed him to take a hundredfold, hundredfold. And 13 said, And the man became rich and gained more and more until he become, became very wealthy. Yes, God did. God blessed Isaac to be prosperous and gain more and more. Isaac became very wealthy and had influence on the society. Yeah, that is a blessing from God. He got many having like having like blessing in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Like that God makes his people famous and successful on earth and God makes your business and job successful and he may give a blessing of children and may make you successful in your daily life. That is a blessing. God bless you. Watch your face. You don't like that blessing? You know what I'm going to say. So anyway, just take the blessing first of all. Okay? Yes, we need success. We need blessing like that. We need to get some rich. We need to be person who have influence on the society. That is God's blessing. God bless you. We're going to have that. Yeah. And also, don't be afraid what I'm going to say. The important point is that there is condition for the blessing of having. Having. Yes, God is going to give us many things, belonging, having. But there is an important condition for the blessing of having. Look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 2. Moreover, all these blessings will come upon you in abundance if, if, I like this word, if, you obey the Lord your God. We can say, Amen. God gives this blessing, these blessings, when we listen to His words. The case of Isaac was the same, in fact. God didn't give him this prosperity because he was the son of Abraham, Abraham's son. No, that's not reason. One day, there was a famine in Canaan where Isaac was living. And Isaac might think to move Egypt. At the time, God told him not to go to Egypt but stay in the land because that was promised land. If Isaac would follow God's words, God said he gonna give him success. It was his promise. If you stay here, I'm gonna give success. God told him. Isaac followed God's words. He never moved to Egypt and he stayed in Canaan even though there was famine. So Isaac got prosperity in God. Like this, this blessing came to Isaac after following his words. Yes, the reason this part is very important is because having itself, having itself cannot be blessing. But through having whatever God gives us, through having, we should grow and mature our faith to focus on God. So I can say like that. We need a blessing about having, but not just having. I like bless you, you're going to have a lot of belonging and having in Jesus Christ. But with having, you, you're going to lose your faith. That's not blessing. Sometimes, as pastor, I would witness people like that. Some people ask me or ask to small group members pray for himself to have good business. Hey, pastor, you know what? To, uh, to success my business, the number one first, first, I need a good location. Number two is a good location. Number three is a good location. So please keep praying for me to find out good location. Okay, okay, that's a good thing. 
after praying, God answered him to find out good location. That's a good one. I hope your, your business will be prosperous this year. Your, your home family, your family members will be prosperous this year. Yes, that's a good thing. But after finding and the, the business is, is great, and then we cannot see him in the church on Lord's Day. What happened? He is too busy to come to church on Sunday. And then, even though he, he can come to church on Sunday, but he, he has lost time to pray and meditate God's words. Do you think that blessing? Yes, in common sense, in the world view, there's a blessing because they got prosperity. They became rich. That's, that's blessing. But in Jesus Christ, in the Bible, God's words, that's not blessing anymore. So, blessing is not just having. Blessing is having about, blessing is the blessing about having, which means with having, with prosperity, with success, we can focus on God. At the time, that is a true blessing God has given to us. So that we should know, number two, the blessing in the Bible is to draw near to God. Yes, right. The Bible teaches us another important blessing. That is to draw near to God. Look at Psalm 73, verse 28, King James Version. But it is good. A good word, a Hebrew word, good means it's blessing too, in fact. It's good for me. It's blessing for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy your works. Yes, to draw, drawing near to God, that is in fact blessing. Whatever we have or whatever happened in our life journey, drawing near to God is true blessing. In fact, in this Psalm, Psalm 73rd one, the Asaph, Asaph was writer of that Psalm. Asaph had a big conflict and struggle in his mind. When you read the Psalm 73, we can notice, we could, we can notice Asaph had very conflict and suffering in his heart. It was a question that, uh, it was the same question uh, that we have. His question is like that. Why? Why bad guys, evil guys are well? Why evil guys have prosperity? Why? Oh, I know. We want to believe Yes, evil guys are always destroyed and good guys have a good prosperity. Yes, sometimes good guys have a prosperity and bad guys have destroy, destroyed things, but in reality, we know that. Bad guys are prosperous and they have a good life. Right? Yeah. SF had the same conflict, same question. His, but although the, the bad guys are very arrogant and they don't believe in God, they are rich and they are well. So Asaph doubted what meaningful, what meaningful he had been in godliness, praying in the morning and reading the Bible and volunteering in the church, what meaningful they are in my life journey. There was SF question, SF confliction. What about you? Sometimes we have the same confliction, same question to God. But when SF went to the temple of God, which means the temple meaning is not just a building, temple means he went in the presence of God and he stand, stand, it up, stand it up before God's word. When, we, when he were in God's presence and his word, he realized the end 
of the evil guy. What would happen to them? Evil guys would be destroyed and never get up again. In fact, in the temple of God, Asaph watched the eternity. Eternity. The evil guy's prosperity and wellness are just like a dream when you compare to eternity. After waking dream, we don't need to care about a dream. So that Asa was so sorry to God because he thought like that. Oh, what is what meaningful? What meaningful it is for me to have a quiet time and praying time. He was so sorry before God. So that he confessed to God like that. Look at the verse 25, Psalm 23, the 73rd one. Whom do I have in heaven but you, God? I desire no one but you on earth. Yes. So that he did realize it was a blessing for him to be close to God. And he desired to declare all God's work in his life journey. Yes, right. That is true blessing. True blessing is to draw near to God. Whatever happened in my life journey and whatever we have. Having, that's a very important one. Prosperity, that's a good one. But more important one is with having, with prosperity, we have to come close to God. At the time, that is true blessing. Uh, in fact, God has made me to meet wonderful believers in my pastoral life before coming here. Uh, one of them, I'd like to I'd like, uh, introduce one story. This is a story of one of them. She uh, she had a chance to tes testify uh, something, the testimony time, 15 years ago. Um, at the time, the, her children were youth, so that she testified something. Actually, he, she, she didn't want to testify, but um, uh, people let her uh, have time testimony. She said like this, My husband, doesn't have faith in Jesus yet, although he, uh, he come to church. He came to church, he doesn't have faith. Actually, money is his God. He always asks God, please give me thunder of money in my thigh, like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> he he asks money all the time. And she said, my two boys, they don't study well. And they always play computer game. Their interest is how to play computer game more and more, more and more, secretly with mom. That's their interest. This situation is not easy for me. No, it's not an easy situation. But I thank God, because this situation makes me pray and depend on God only. Whenever I come to God with this problem, God makes me know how precious my family is, and God makes me have the hope in Jesus. She said, I trust, I trust. Someday, the Father God let me remember this time and make a smile with gratefulness. I believe that I have that hope. That is one of the best testimony I have heard. Now, I, I think you know that. Now, her husband is a very healthy Christian now. And her two boys are married and live well in Jesus Christ. The point of her testimony is it. Her situation 
was not boastful one. Actually, she could complain about her life. What a miserable my life is in Korean language. 아이고, 내 팔자야. Yeah, that situation is like that. But the situation, her situation made her to draw near to God because she had life in Jesus Christ. It is thankfulness and it is blessing. Same to us. I know you got some situation. You have some homework you have to solve. I know that. But don't worry about that. Actually, homework problem, that's not blessing. I don't like that blessing. That's not blessing. But if you take them and you come to God closely, yes, drawing near to God is blessing. We can use our situation to make the blessing. Because we have life in Jesus Christ. Are you agree? Say amen. amen. At the moment, we can understand another blessing. There's another blessing. That is, blessing is trusting in God. When you are near to God more and more, we understand. We can understand He, our Father God, is the one, only one, we can trust. We can have a successful life in Jesus because of following his words and we can, need, we can be near to God with having God has given to us. At the time, there is another blessing that is trusting in God. Psalm 84 verse 10 through 12 says, For a day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. Oh, it's a very famous word, right? I would rather... Be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things does he withhold from those who walk uprightly, honestly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Trusting God is to know the value of drawing near to God. So we can say just one day in his court. The court is not just a palace. The court means the place where uh, God's reign as God's govern is. That is the court meaning. So we understand, we understand how valuable we take his reign, his governing in our life journey. Just one day in your court, better than a thousand, a thousand days elsewhere. It's better to be the keeper of our father's home, the dwelling and the tent of evil. That is, understand the value to draw near to God. At the time, we can trust in God, we can depend on God. Why? Because God the Father always wants to give us His favor and honor. He doesn't withhold good things from us who walk honestly. We can experience it. We can experience about that, especially when we are close to His words, the words of God. Trusting God is to be near to his words and trust in his words too. Like Psalm 1, first one, the blessed are those who delight in God's words and meditation on it day and night. In this world, in this world that is full of the advice of wicked or the way of sinners and the seed of scornful, scornful. come near to God's words. There is near to God. At the time, you can depend on, you can depend on God practically. So come near to God's words and swallow his words. Because the essence of the world is our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, draw near to Jesus in your life journey. Trust in Jesus Christ. You, we may have God's guarantee at the moment. 
then we can have the highways to Zion in our heart. That is a blessing too. Because we trust in God. We can't wait for His help in our life journey because we got, we got highways to Zion. Zion means our eternal home. We got highways in our heart. We have got highways in our heart. So that's why we can wait for God's help all the time in our life journey. People, people doesn't like waiting. People doesn't like waiting. They, they cannot wait for it. But we, as disciples who follow Jesus Christ, we can wait for his help. Because God never failed to help us. Isaiah 30, 18 says like this, So the Lord must wait for you to come to him. Yes, come near to him, my brothers and sisters. Ask him his help. So he can show you his love and his compassion. Because the Lord is a faithful God, our Father. And then, blessed are those who wait for his help. Yes, right. That's blessing. The reason we can wait for his help is because God the Father is the one who helps us and loves us. Even though people will be impatient and cannot wait, we have his blessing. We can wait for him. That is blessing. God, who has love and compassion to us, will work for you. He's a faithful God. He's God of justice. At the time, when you remember that, we can trust in God. Whatever happened in our life journey. We may have success in Jesus Christ all the time. Yes, that is good prosperity. The prosperity will be the tool making us to draw near to God and trust in His words. He can take the blessing, we can take the blessing that waits for God in our life journey. This is blessing the Bible teaches us. My family members, this year, we're going to experience these blessings in Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are blessed. Because we ourselves are blessings. Blessings. God going to bless people who bless us, and if someone dishonors us, he will curse. Yes, because we are blessings. Our being, our being self is the blessing. So we're going to enjoy the Beatitudes. We're going to be disciples who follow Jesus only. But, my brothers and sisters, remember what blessing is in the Bible. Remember that. Remember that. And take that blessing. And follow Jesus with that blessing. The end of this year, we're going to see ourselves to be disciples who follow Jesus only. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your message today. And also thank you for giving us time to have communion. Father God, we want to be blessed. And we want to be blessing. Yes, Father God, we are so blessed because we are here. And Father God, with the blessing you have given us, given to us, we want to be disciples who follow Jesus only. Not someone else, not something else, Father God. Please make us disciples who follow you this year. Yes, that is our topic. So, Father, we want to be disciples who follow you. So, that, Father, we need to understand what blessings are. Let us know the true blessing and give us true blessings. 
So with a blessing, we want to follow Jesus all the time. Please give us your blessing this day. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.